Hi everyone, it's Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'll be creating an under the sea themed card using the wavy nested frames, the under the sea stamp set, build an ocean die set because I can't get enough of it, as well as the blurry flurries one confetti mix. I started out with two pieces of blue cardstock, one darker than the other. I used the second largest wavy nested frame die on the lighter blue and the third largest wavy nested frame wavy nested frame die on the darker blue cardstock and ran those through my Gemini Junior. I made sure to keep the cutout piece from the lighter blue because I'm going to use that at the very end to finish my dimensional under the sea themed card. I wanted to add a little bit of sand to the front of my panel so I used some brown ink and an ink blending brush and just did a rough blend along the bottom. I wasn't worried about it being perfectly blended because of all the stuff that I'm gonna to add to the bottom. We'll cover it up, but I did wanna have something there just to ground my images. I die cut quite a few of the images from the Build an Ocean die set, and I decided to add a bright purple for my piece of coral. For all of the images that I had die cut from the Build an Ocean die set, I decided just to do ink blending instead of actual coloring. For the coral and the seaweed, one thing that I did do to add just a tiny bit of texture was I did some tapping with my ink blending brush before I started doing the actual blend in a circle motion, just so I could have some areas that were darker than the other. I'll be sure to have all of the ink colors that I used listed down in the description box below for you, as well as all of the products. The images that I used from the Under the Sea stamp set, I did use my Copics for that, and I'll be sure to list those as well. So for the sand dollar, I wanted my sand dollar to be gray, but as I was ink blending it, I noticed that it was starting to get a little bit too dark, and I wanted to add just a tad bit of brown. So I used the same brown that I had used for my sand and just did very light tapping and quick brushings over it. And then I spritzed it with water just to mellow out those colors a little bit. For the scallop shell and the long, twisty, swirly shell, I still don't know what that's called, I started out along the bottom with the brown ink that I used for the sand. After I had the bottom edges of those shells inked up with the brown, I came in and finished up with a peach colored ink. After I had all of my elements ink blended and my images colored, which I did off camera in the interest of time, it was time to put the card together. Get your foam tape ready. You got to use a whole lot of it. As you saw there, I had coated the back of each piece of cardstock with a whole bunch of foam tape. And when I adhered the light blue on top of the darker blue, I had the die cut opening of the light blue going in the opposite direction of the light blue so that they didn't line up perfectly. I wanted to have that, that wonkiness between those two layers. Next, I removed the release paper just around the die cut opening on the back of the dark bluer, of the darker blue cardstock and adhered the cutout piece from the lighter blue cardstock. Next, it was time to adhere all of my little elements. For the most part, I used liquid glue to adhere everything, with the exception of that long swirly shell that I still don't know what it's called. I did use foam tape for that. And then I also used foam tape for my little hermit crab and the little turtle. When deciding how to put these elements together on the front of the card, a lot of it is just kind of moving stuff around. I don't just wing it. I spend probably entirely too much time trying to figure it all out and then I'll take a picture of it so I remember how I had it. So when I actually go to put the card together, I have that picture to reference so I know where to put stuff. One thing that I kept in mind while I was putting all of the elements on the bottom of this card is I knew that my little hermit crab was going to take up quite a bit of space in the bottom left hand corner. So I made sure to have a cluster of stuff over on the right hand side and then the purple coral was just kind of there all by itself. So then I decided to add in a small purple starfish and then I wanted to make sure that my yellow starfish was still showing. So that's why I adhered the orange starfish higher up on that seagrass so that it would still be visible even with my little hermit crab down on the bottom. 
And then for my little turtle, I just adhered him right smack in the center of the cutout openings. Once I had everything adhered to the card fronts there, I removed all of the release paper from the foam tape, added a little bit of liquid glue to the back light blue panel, and adhered that to the front of a top folding A2 size note card that I had created from white cardstock. Now, with the sequins and confetti that I added, which this is the Blurry Flurries 1 confetti mix from This Calls for Confetti, there are some very teeny tiny little confetti pieces that I thought would work perfect to give the illusion of bubbles. And I found the easiest way to get those guys adhered was to get a piece of scratch paper, put a dollop of glue on the scratch paper, and dip the sequins into the glue rather than trying to get the tiniest amount of glue on the card panel. I found that to be the easiest way to add in those little sequins. And once I had all of my sequins added, that's it. That finishes up my card for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, we'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.